Hello again. David Olive Soger came to prominence six years ago when he made a television series with the BBC, who else, about the supposedly forgotten history of black people in Britain. I want to look at the first part of this series today because it has become something of a foundation myth for those who believe that there has been a continuous black presence in Britain dating back 2,000 years. This is, of course, completely untrue, but the means used to promote this fake history are very interesting to examine. We can see how the BBC has willingly collaborated in what they must surely know to be a lot of nonsense. In 2016, a four-part series was broadcast on BBC, hosted by Ollie Soger and called Black and British, A Forgotten History. This was later turned by David Olusoga into a very successful book with various editions being produced, including one aimed at children. I do not have the time or leisure to cover all of this, but thought I would limit myself to Olusoga's claims that there were black people in Britain at the time of the Roman occupation. This idea was covered in the first episode of the television series broadcast in November 2016. It was only six years ago, but the untruthful stories which were told then have now become accepted as truth by many simple and gullible people. In the description to this video is a link to some of what is said by Olusoga in that first episode, and I want to explain why I talk of his deceit and deliberate dishonesty in this matter. This is a serious charge, of course, why do I think that he is deliberately misleading people rather than simply being a sloppy and useless researcher? The title for the series is, of course, Black and British. This tells us that we are dealing with people who were both black and had some connection or lived in Britain. The first dishonesty lies in a linguistic trick, that of persuading people that African is synonymous with black. Looking at the link I give will show that the first two things with which Olusoga deals are the Emperor Septimius Severus and a unit of Moors stationed at Hadrian's Wall. Severus was born in what is now Libya to a Roman mother and Carthaginian father. He was not black. The Moors stationed at Hadrian's Wall were Berbers. They were not black either. The BBC, though, erected a plaque to commemorate the showing of Olusoga's programme, which describes the Moors as the first recorded African community in Britain. If you're making a programme about black people in Britain and then talk about a community of Africans in Britain, then clearly you wish to suggest that these people were black. Otherwise, there'd be no point in including them in a programme about black people in Britain. This is the deception. Using the word African in a programme about black people and hoping that nobody would notice that these Africans were not black people at all. This could hardly be accidental. It is a deliberate attempt to distort history. Then we see an even worse instance, and one which has fortunately provided us with a permanent memorial to the dishonesty, gullibility and foolishness of the BBC when it comes to matters of ethnicity and race. Scroll down the link a bit and you will find a picture of David Olusoga holding a skull. We are told this was of a woman found near Beachy Head on the south coast of England. According to Olusoga, carbon dating and isotope analysis show that she was from sub-Saharan Africa. This is quite untrue. The isotope analysis actually indicated that she had grown up in and had probably been born near Eastbourne in Sussex. The statement is bluntly made, she was sub-Saharan African. The BBC then had a plaque installed near where the skeleton had been found, saying that she was of African origin, something for which there was no evidence at all other than the shape of her skull looked a bit funny. The thumbnail to this video shows a fanciful reconstruction of this supposed African woman. Eastbourne was thrilled to find itself so famous from a multicultural viewpoint, 
it is, after all, a pretty white town. And so they decided to burnish their, uh, what should we say, multiracial credentials by sending off a DNA sample of the Beachy Head woman to the Crick Institute to see just where in Africa she was from. Big mistake. The DNA showed that she was from Southern Europe, most probably Cyprus. No connection whatsoever with Africa. This too indicates a certain level of cunning on Olusoka's part, because by mentioning the scientific tests for isotope analysis, he hints that it was this which confirmed that the woman was African, whereas the deep isotope tests actually indicated that she was from Sussex. It was really somebody looking at the skull and deciding that it had an African appearance that uh, led to the whole myth of an African origin. That's not at all a scientific process. It's hopeless to try and turn back the tide of misinformation which David Olusoga initiated by this dreadful programme. The supposedly black soldiers at Hadrian's Wall are now fixed in modern mythology, as is the uh, Black Emperor. It's fascinating to see how this television programme although only made six years ago, has caused so many falsehoods to become accepted generally as fact, rather than the fiction, which they actually are. <laughs>